Hello, my name is Kat, but I'm a dog person, and I love to read, so let's talk about some books. I would like to talk about Sadie by Courtney Summers. Sadie the super spy, Sadie the bounty hunter, Sadie that bitch. I'll start out this video by saying Sadie is a book that has a lot of sensitive topics in it, and if you are not in the right mindset, you shouldn't read it. But if you are in the right mindset and you're in a healthy mindset to read it, I completely and wholeheartedly encourage you to do so. This book is the book that really got me into listening to audiobooks. It has a podcast within it, and just listening to the way that they portray the podcast fully immerses you into the whole story. It's got sound effects, it's got music, you really feel like you're following along the story of a real girl. This book starts when Wes McRae, a popular radio personality, gets a call asking him to please find 19-year-old runaway Sadie Hunter. Wes isn't very interested in the story at first, but then his boss finds out that Sadie actually ran away shortly after her sister was murdered. Sounds like we can profit off of the suffering of teenage girls. Get at it. We go through this story seeing both Sadie's and Wes's perspective. It's really interesting because you get to see Sadie going through these events, and then you kind of get to cheer Wes on when he's on the right track, when he's investigating. When Wes goes to Sadie's small town, he meets Maybeth Foster, who happens to be the closest thing that Sadie has ever had to a real parental figure. Maybeth pushes harder than anyone for Sadie's safe return. I loved her character because she truly cares about Sadie and her sister, and it really feels like without her, they would have been alone in the world. Maybeth is a sweet older lady who was Sadie's mother's mother's landlord. She was friends with Sadie's grandma, and so she saw Sadie's mother Claire grow up. Maybeth describes Claire as someone who was just born bad. This brings a really interesting narrative into the story. Can someone be born bad? Does everybody have some chance at redemption? Claire was into drinking and drugs and getting misdemeanors at a very young age. Claire's mother actually dies of breast cancer when Claire is pregnant with Sadie. And here's the part where the story gets a little bit cringy. Maybeth promises Sadie's grandma on her deathbed that she will protect her grandchild. Slightly shitty backstory aside, I'm really glad that Sadie has a character who is actually rooting for her and knows her whole story because everyone around Sadie perceives her as stupid because she has a stutter. And I absolutely love the representation because it's a representation that can be symbolic of so many other things as well. There are so many people who are perceived as stupid because of their disabilities. Not only is Sadie's stutter really good representation, it's also really refreshing to see a YA female main character who is actually smart by showing you, and the people around her think that she's stupid, because usually a lot of YA female main characters, they just tell you over and over how pretty she is and how everyone loves her and how she's just so smart, but you never see any actual evidence of her intelligence. With Sadie, I feel like you can tell this bitch is willful and intelligent. This bitch has a pocket knife a picture, and a dream, okay? That's all she's got. And I am just so unbelievably proud of her, even though we don't get confirmation that she is okay. Sadie ran away because she wants to find the man who killed her sister. She knows that it is her mom's ex-boyfriend who is a complete and total sleazebag. Sadie starts tracking down the man that killed her sister by going to a diner that she remembers him mentioning and finding someone who might have seen him and showing his picture around and pretending that she is his daughter looking for him. Because when she goes throughout this whole story trying to find him, she can't be like, oh, hey, here's that guy. Um, I'm looking for him because I want to kill him. So she has to come up with different personas and stories and 
She has to pull all of this off while getting people to look past her stutter. I think it's like slightly convenient that the waitress happened to still be working at the diner and she remembered what this guy looked like and she was able to help point Sadie in her direction. Like, it's a little convenient, but I mean, it is probably like a diner in the middle of nowhere where someone would work for a long time. So it's... Uh... Throughout the story, we get to learn more about Sadie's past and how bad this guy was. I don't even want to say his name. She finds out that this guy wasn't even using his real name when he was dating her mom. This guy was a pedophile. This dude has several identities so that he can go off and prey on several families with children. One of the things that really gets me is like, not only was he evil, but he kept trophies. Like, he would cut tags out of the kid's clothes after hurting them and keep the tag with like their name on it as a little souvenir. I'm not sure that I wanted Wes to find Sadie in the end because I feel like Sadie is such a smart character that if she did not want to be found, she wouldn't be found. I feel like the only way he could have found her is if she was dead. I actually really liked the ambiguous ending because I have thought about it a lot. Like, is she alive? Is she not alive? I think she's alive. I really hope she's alive. My heart wants to believe she's alive. But she did get knocked out. How would she have, like, easily recovered? I don't know. I don't know. Do you think that Sadie's alive? What are your thoughts on the story? Do you think that it was believable that the waitress could remember what that guy looked like? Comment below. And if you have any recommendations for books that are similar to this, please drop them in the comments below because I loved this book and I don't normally love anything that's really contemporary. So, 